Hi, welcome to episode 4 of Adventures in Common Lisp. We're working through Peter Norvig's classic Lisp text, Paradigms of Artificial Intelligence Programming. Um, if you've been following this series so far, we've been doing every exercise. We got up to exercise 1.3. I'm actually going to skip exercise 1.4 because I don't think it teaches a whole lot more uh, than what I've already sort of covered in exercise 1.3. I think if you can solve exercise 1.3, Exercise 1.4 should be kind of a breeze, uh, so I'm going to skip straight to the next exercise, 1.5. In this exercise, we have to write a function called dot product. Which is going to take two lists, and it's going to, um, well, they're lists of numbers, and it's going to find their dot product. Uh, and as a refresher, a dot, the dot product is where you take corresponding elements of a vector, you multiply them together, um, and then you just add the whole thing up and you get a, a single scalar value which is called the dot product. So for example, if we have two vectors with three elements each, to find the dot product we're going to multiply these corresponding values together, and we're going to get 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 3 is 6, 3 times 4 is 12, uh, and then we're going to just add those all up, and we're going to get 20, and that's the dot product of these two vectors. Um, now, there are a few different ways of solving this. Um, the book provides three different ways. I'm going to give you uh, the way that I think is the most elegant and sort of the most functional. If you've done any functional programming before, you've probably heard of a function called map, which takes some function f and a list and applies f to every element in the list and then gives you back a new list with uh, the contents of which are f applied to each element. To give an example, if you have a list 1, 2, 3, and you call map some function f on 1, 2, 3, you're going to get back a list which is just f1, f2, f3. So common lisp has a function a lot like that. Uh, in common lisp it's actually called map car. Um, and that's to distinguish it from a few other map functions that exist in common lisp. Uh, the idea is that it gets each successive element by sort of calling car on each successive const cell on the list. Remember the car is the first value of a const cell which is a pair and a list is just a chain of const cells. So map car is probably the most used uh, mapping function, but there's a few others. There's one called map list, which sort of instead of uh, applying the function to each successive car, it applies it to sort of each successive list. Um, and if you, if you want more information on all this, consult the list Piper spec. It has everything you need to know. So the reason why I'm telling you about this is because map car in common list actually can take more than one list. Uh, if you look down here, you see the uh, arguments, it can optionally take more lists. And what that's going to do is instead of applying this function f um, just to the individual elements in list, it's actually going to sort of take corresponding elements from list and more lists um, and give those as arguments to the function. So I think another example is just in order quickly. If you have list one list which contains ABC and another list which contains DEF and you call map car some function F on those two lists you're going to get a list back which is going to be F applied to A and D, F applied to B and E and oh, sorry this is a little confusing I have two F's here but F applied to C and F. Um, 
And if you recall from the definition of dot product, that's sort of exactly what we want as our first step. We want to multiply the corresponding elements of the list. So I'm just going to do that. Apply the multiplication function to L1 and L2. Um, and this syntax here just means that we want common lisp to look up uh, this in the function namespace. We're saying that this is the name of a function, not the name of a regular variable. Um, in common lisp, functions and regular variables have two different namespaces. Um, so we need this when the function is not the first element in the uh, in an S expression list. Uh, to tell common lisp to look in the right namespace. So mapcar is going to multiply the corresponding elements of L1 and L2. And then the next thing we just need to do is add all those things up. Um, and to do that, we're going to use a function called reduce. So reduce takes a function and a sequence you can ignore all these uh, optional keyword arguments for now. What reduce does is if you have a list A, B, and C, um, the way I like to think of it is that it, it combines these elements kind of by like sticking some operation in between. So uh, this works perfectly. For our example, we want to add all the things together. We want to add all these things together. So we want a plus b plus c. So we're going to use reduce with the, uh, the addition function. And this uh, should just about do it. Let's evaluate that. Let's just test this real quickly. And there we go, it gives the right answer. I think it's, it's interesting to point out that this combination of mapping and reducing is really powerful. Uh, you may have heard of a company called Google, and back in the day, when they first started, sort of the big technical innovation behind Google was that they realized that instead of buying big supercomputers or uh, servers from companies like Sun or SGI or whatever, they could buy really cheap commodity computers um, and parallelize their computations across them. Um, and they did that with what they called MapReduce, which was inspired directly by this sort of thing. The idea is that this mapping function, uh, if, it's, if it's totally functional, if there's no side effects, you can run this mapping function on the corresponding elements of the lists. Those can be split up across as many computers as possible, or as, as you need. And then the only time you kind of need to, to serialize things is when you start combining things with the reduce function. Um, so Google realized that they could do this, and this let them basically crawl the internet a lot faster and give much better search results than all the other guys. Uh, and now they own the entire world. Um, so that is the power of MapReduce, mapping and reducing. Um, and now you know it. Uh, so now you have what it takes to uh, become the next Google. <laughs> um, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, if you felt like you learned something, please like, comment, or subscribe. Um, and hopefully I will see you next time for more adventures in Common Lisp.